Hello, everyone, and welcome to Whip Finish Wednesday. It is uh, Wednesday night. Katie and I have had a busy, busy week. What's up, Al and Jimmy and Mr. Brashears? Good to see you on here. Sorry your buddies weren't having the brewery tour tonight. Um, we're live here with Misha right here. She's enjoying sniffing the, the feather plumage around. And Katie's on the other side of the computer. And we are going to be tying up one of Charlie Craven's golden stones, CDC golden stones. What's up, Chris and, and Jeff Rowley, Patrick Smith, Ed, James, Mike, and Joel and Christine. Glad to see everyone hopping on here and everyone on YouTube is we're on Instagram as well. Thanks for jumping on. If you're on Instagram, see if you can switch over and watch on YouTube. You'll be able to see quite a bit better. Um, and I meant to grab the fly box we're giving away, but we told you, well, I've got a confession to make. I just, I walked into the house 10 minutes ago, literally. That's why I'm dressed like this and not my normal attire. Uh, so we're going to have to, uh, What's up, Dave, Nan, Freddie, Truman, Ed, and Gary? We're going to have to post, but we'll do two, two drawings next week, and I apologize because I was going to have the fly box and the drawing stuff ready, and we do the drawing fair, and I, don't ha I haven't cut out the names because it's been one of those weeks, so I apologize. But Ken, can't stay after. Well, thanks for jumping on, Ken, our Australian buddy. Um, so we'll do the, the drawing next week for this week's um, thing. But the one person that has been on, on uh, point this week is Katie. And she has a bunch of pictures that she wants to share right now. So with that said, I'm on point. we'll turn it over to her and Misha. <laughs> so take it away, Katie. Let's see those. those uh, roll that beautiful bean That's footage. Some really good ones. This is Chasing Feathers uh, Mini Jig Streamer. So last week we did mini jig streamers. So these are everybody's cool versions of mini jig, jig streamers from Insta. So here's uh, two. I like that tail on there, that, uh, yeah. that barred marabou. Cool. And J.W. J. Wilson, 14360. And we met, we met Jim in we Virginia. We met him at the show and he was super so, nice. And we had so much fun talking to him. He was a really cool guy, so... That's his version. Mm, what else? Okay, so we've got the Sculpin Group. That's a good selection of colors. That pink one, I, I kept saying the white and the all over my favorite ones, but uh, and the black, of course, but that pink one looks mean. I like it. Mm -hmm. And Big T. Old Steve. Big T, that's a good looking one. Flame Lily Flies. Flamely flies and what's up? Nikki? I love the setup, like the pose. Oh um, yeah, that's that's West. Freddie. Wes always does a good job, and so does Freddie. Howard the Duck twenty three, and we actually saw Howie at the show in Virginia as well, and had some of the awesome coffee that he was peasant there, actually handing out free samples. Angler's Coffee. If you haven't tried it, try it today. Angler's Coffee. Delicious. <laughs> and, and Howie did a video, and there's actually a video on YouTube of him tying this fly. So that was that was pretty cool that, that Howie did that. Who's next? Okay, so um, we also have AK Sledneck. Oh. And Chris and Jimmy Roop and Patrick Patrick Smith. Smith. I like that the body on this one, the the the, the ice dive, whatever you use on that. That's a really good color. Now, if I missed anybody, I'm really sorry. Um, sometimes I have a hard time sort of figuring out where they are on Instagram, but thanks guys for sending those in. They look awesome. Awesome. Well, That's thank you, it. Katie. Mm -hmm. You nailed it. Everyone give Katie a round of applause. Yay. So, and Jim bought some Angler's Coffee. We and did too. Those, those of you all that were saying hello as Katie was talking, hello to you guys. And if you're new here, ask questions, jump in, and uh, just poke fun. 
This is a this is a fun time. We enjoy getting on here and uh, tying patterns that we've had success with, trying out some new things, and uh, seeing what you all do. And Katie, you don't have that picture that I emailed you or texted you today, do you? Surfer Dad sent me a yes, picture of of not a um, it's not on the computer, so we might show it next week of a rainbow that he caught on a size twenty poison tongue. That was another one of Charlie Craven's patterns that we tied on here uh, a few weeks maybe a month ago i can probably pull that up in a minute he caught a, a kind of nice rainbow on a size 20 so awesome job ed and um howie's over there on i wish you could, you were watching on youtube Howie, so you could have seen the uh seen the pictures and maybe you are but um if there's uh anyone on instagram that's watching if you can watch on youtube because it'll be you'll see a little bit better and We'll be able to see your comments as well. So as Jeff Rowley just said, yeehaw, let's get to tying. So the fly we're going to tie today, we tied a couple, maybe a couple years ago on the show, just on Instagram. And um, this is one that uh, this past year I caught my personal best trout in the Great Smoky Mountains. So it's, it was a, a wild brown uh, in the little, in a little creek. And uh, it was 17 inches or so, which isn't big. But when you consider how big the great the the streams are in the Great Smoky Mountains, there is Ed's trophy catch on that size 20. So that's Super a good cool. job, Katie. You get it? Well, that's kind of what I do over here. So yeah. So yeah. Ed, good job on that. Uh, and and we love it when you guys send us these pictures. We absolutely love it. That's what we will we'll share them up. So. Good job, Ed. Thanks for sending that to us. Um, what's up, Don and Don over on Instagram? Check us out on, see me flip over to YouTube if you can. You'll be able to see a little bit better. Um, so this, um, the fly that we're going to tie is featured in Charlie Craven's book, book Tying Nymphs. As you can see here, it is actually the cover fly. Um, the big difference we're going to do is we're going to tie it on a jig hook. Oh, jig hook. Um Thank you, Steve. I know I know 17 inches is not a bit not a big fish, but when you're looking when you're looking at it, it's not our biggest yeah. fish of the year by any means, but in the park, it is our biggest fish. Um, and uh, you know, you got a stream that's not very big, pull one of those whoppers out. I was proud of it. Um, but um, but this is a good book, good step by step tutorial. Uh, you can also look up Charlie Craven's page uh, on YouTube and uh, find out how to tie it there as well or you can just tie along with us, however you'd like to do it. Um, if you tie this up or if you catch something, you want to post the picture, use hashtag Wit Finish Wednesday. We will share your story or share your uh, your picture, and um, we'll get rolling. So as Gary said, let's get jiggy with it. Enough talking. So I'm going to do use a size 12 um, jig hook. This is the Umqua XC400. Um, nothing, nothing too fancy. Uh, just a good solid <clears throat> um, size 12 jig hook. Now, the reason I'm doing size 12 is typically this is tied on a traditional streamer hook that's like a 2x long streamer hook. Um, so I've got a little more real estate on the um, on the hook shank. Um, since we're using the jig, I've got a shorter, comparatively, a shorter uh, hook shank. So this is going to be comparable to a size 14 um a size 14 traditional uh, hook. And uh, I'm, I typically uh, out on the East Coast, we're throwing smaller stuff than the West Coast as a general rule. So um, <clears throat> that's why I'm doing a size 14. Uh, I don't know in his book, he probably ties these size 10, size 8s, uh, something around there for uh, on traditional net hook. So use whatever hook you feel comfortable fishing. Uh, and uh, and I'm sure it'll be just fine. So this is size 12. As far as um, materials, I have yellow classic wax thread, 12 watt. So nothing fancy, just some good old classic regular wax. Regular yellow. Just regular. Normal yellow. Just regular yellow. Not fluorescent yellow. Not not bright yellow. Not sunburst yellow. Just yellow. 12 watt. 12 watt. Um, the we're going to use o two o wire, so the lead wire, lead pre wire o two o for the dubbing. 
Uh, I'm going to use this life cycle dubbing. Uh, the main reason I'm doing this is because it's a coarse dubbing and because it's it's the correct uh, color, the stonefly yellow. And I was looking at different things and the, the tannish, the different colors. And this is this is the closest thing I find to what I'm looking for. Um, but uh, but don't get don't get caught up in the and the um, the type of dubbing. The key, uh, if you can, use a coarse dubbing because the coarse dubbing is going to allow it to soak up the water um, and and sink a little bit quicker. And also, it'll it'll drop the water off. And uh, what's a what's a fancy word for it? It's like six eight plus. Yep, that's Steve. That's what I'm saying. Most people are going to time bigger than this, but um, the uh, so anyway, I'm using just use a, a yellowish dubbing. Uh, the wing case is going to be the Semperfly uh, Flat Mirage Tinsel. So this is in the large or the 1 16th inch 1.5 millimeter. And uh, Cade, uh, over dead drift fly fishing, if you use the 12 watt, it, having the right bobbin, using the tension, um, like use your hand to stop the tension. You just have to take your time with it a little bit. Once you get the feel for it, it's not a big deal. But you can use a dot. You can use six dot. You just have to watch your thread wraps a little bit more. As far as a hackle on this one, I'm going to use this uh, the Brahma Hen Cape. Uh, this is in a golden straw. For the one we posted today, I use this uh, uh, Whiting Soft Hackle Chickaboom. That's grizzly yellow, I believe. Let's see. Oh, it doesn't say. I guess I'll just have to guess. No, oh, I've got it on the bag. Yep, grizzly dyed yellow, whiting rooster soft tackle with chickaboo, grizzly dyed yellow. So that's what this one is. I wonder if the avian blue is affecting the whiting farms hackle supply. I doubt. It. I very seriously. I guess because they're already dead. No, they're they're quite alive until they're not, but they're, they're not for human consumption. So maybe that has something to do with it. Maybe I don't so. Know. Um. This will be another option if we get crazy tonight because no one likes uh okay the now silk is so yeah. Um the uh how is correct. Um if we get crazy and since no one likes purple, we might do a purple version and use this freshwater streamer cape. The reason I'm showing you these three different selections of soft tackle is you can use pretty much whatever you want. Um, as long as the color is kind of what you want. The, the key with this is we've got the CDC collar, and that's going to add the movement, that's going to add the motion, and really the soft tackle is mainly for color and to give it the um, <clears throat> give it the modeling look. So plastic wax is great. Yep. Purple doesn't work, Purple says Chris. does not work at all. So, and the last thing, because I'm so prepared, is uh, CDC. So I'll go ahead and pull out the, this one looks fine. So we'll do we'll use a Swiss CDC, uh, but any CDC, I want to use this, this pale yellow. Um, if you've got tan, that would be fine. If you've got anything kind of goes with, uh, I'll look, look at what the soft tackles representing. That's wings, that's legs, that's um, any bits of the, of the um, uh, wing case that's coming off. Any bits All the of that, insecty that goodness. So, so um, <clears throat> once again, don't get too too caught up in the in the color. But I'm gonna use pale yellow. My color language tonight. Oh well, good. I'm glad to hear it. So let's get to tying. Am I forgetting anything? Oh, one more thing. I'm getting pheasant tail. I've got some yellow pheasant tail here. This is Nature Spirit dye pheasant tail, and some three X tippet. Uh, I think that's it. If I didn't, I'm sure Gary will tell me if I'm forgetting something. He will. Already I'm already sure hard. he will. So step one. All right. I think the next standalone video we're going to do is how to wrap wire. And that's just something that um, <clears throat> I see a lot of people, as simple as it sounds, having difficulty with. So I'll give you a quick little demo. Uh, we grab our wire. We hold it up, hold a piece out like so. Oh, can't say like so. Katie gets on me. Grab you think it makes you sound smarter. I think it makes it sound smarter. You do. I think that you think it makes you oh, sound smarter yeah. to say like so. That's right. Like you heard it on TV one time and you thought it sounded good. That's right. Timothy Vetter. Yes, this is the CDC Golden Stone is the original pattern that we're going to tie. This is a Charlie Craven pattern and you can see it in his book or on his YouTube channel. But yes, this is a CDC Golden Stone fly. 
Um, so we're gonna grab the 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 tip in here. So you see it's just and just grab enough that you can hold on to it. We're gonna do six or seven wraps. So here's the trick: wrap backwards. So that's one, two, side by side, touching wraps, three, four, five, six, and we'll call that they call that seven and done. So now you can see what we've got here. We've got this the two ends wrapped off. <clears throat> so I'm gonna grab the end that the spool's attached to. I'm gonna pull and I'm gonna helicopter this off and kind of bend it against the, the hook shank. And now it's broken off clean. As you can see, I've, I'm ready to go for the next one and it's attached to my spool. So there's no waste there. For the uh, the rest of the, the wire, I just shove it up to where I want to want it to be, make sure my bead is situated correctly. And uh, hold it here. And now we're gonna just kind of do the same thing, helicopter that off. And with any luck, it'll break off just like that. And once you get the feel for it and break it off like that, you've got probably about a quarter inch of waste and that's it. We're, uh, we're shoved up there, ready to go. Well, Howie, Katie has gotten onto me enough that when I say it, I always say, shoot, I don't need to say that. So, <clears throat> all right, why do we wrap it backwards? Why do we wrap the thread backwards or the, the wire backwards? It's because when I butt the thread up here, and I start doing thread wraps back, especially without my glasses on, which makes it that much more fun, and bring it back forward, my thread's not hitting. See right here, if it was backwards, my thread would hit that broken off end, and I'd start pushing it over and start messing up my thread wraps. But now I'm able to build a little bit more of a ramp of easier than if I would have um, <clears throat> wrapped in a traditional manner. And I just broke my thread and broke everything off, and that did not work. So this time I'll just trim it. Don't do that. Don't do that. So come on, smart comment. Somebody did it. It's because I'm not wearing my glasses. Can't see. That wouldn't have happened to Davey McPhail. No, not at all. So we'll try this again. <clears throat> now we got it pulled off. Now we'll start building our ramp here. And all I'm trying to do is build a transition in between the hook shank here all the way up to the thread here. I'm not going to try to build bulk so much on the, th the lead, but I am going to run. Well, now I've got it built nicely. Oh, oh snaps are right. Oh, Gary, thanks for the heads up on that, Gary. Um, now, now we've got the, the ramp kind of built, so my thread will easily go, and I'm just going to put a few not not really touching wraps, just kind of open wraps here. And now I'm going to come back and bring it down. And that's all the, the thread I'm going to put on that lead. Okay. So now I'm going to bring my thread back to the, the hook bin. <clears throat> so now we're going to pull out our pheasant stuff, the fun stuff in life when you make. Yeah. Excuse you, Misha. Strong like, <laughs> strong like something. And Misha just belts all over the place. Surprised if y'all didn't hear it. Okay, so I'm gonna get my uh, pheasant tail. I'm gonna grab uh, a handful of fibers. Let's see, that's probably a little too much. So I've got four. So, yeah, I hit right the first time. So I don't know how many that is. Someone can tell me that is. Um, let's see, six, eight. Hold it up to the hook so we can see them. There's that many or that many right there. So that I think that's roughly three, that's four, five, eight. six, about ten, about ten or so. So I've got my butt ends lined up here. And this is a trick I showed. Maybe Jim, I can't remember, one, one of you all this, this weekend. Right now, they're going the wrong way. So if I tie it in like this, my butt ends are going that way, and that's not what I want. So let's switch over to this side camera, honey. And um, so I want to switch sides of the, of the pheasant tail. And suppose you're going like this and back and forth. If you will just take your material, you can do this with hackle, you can do this with anything. Put your thing, your thumbs together like this. And let go. So now the only thing that's holding it are my thumbs. Take my finger, grab it like that. So I just I'm all I'm doing is switching directions of the material back and forth. And it doesn't change the it doesn't mess up how I've got it lined up. So trick number possibly trick number one. Me, me and Katie are playing catch over there. Fetch, catch over there. Um, so possibly trick number one, back and forth. Thumbs. One way, thumbs, 
the other way. And because my when I ripped the material off and the butt ends were lined up, we should be pretty well lined up on the um, yeah on our tips. So we'll come back over here. So another thing we want to look at is keeping the um, keeping the tail short. The tail needs to be roughly. Thanks, Steve. Mark, you the man. It is like magic. But then once you start seeing that and doing it, you're like, why didn't I think of that 13 years ago? And thanks, CJ. Um, the <laughs> length of the um, the length of the the tail needs to be roughly the the hook gap or half the hook shank, depending on what kind of uh, depending on what kind of hook you're using. Half the hook shank is a good rule of thumb or the hook gap. But all I'm gonna do is grab it by the tips, hold it right on top. Do a quick pinch wrap, pull straight down, and look at it. And for me, that might be just a hair on the long side. So I'm going to grab the butt ends, pull up. That'll kind of pull them together. And that's good. Well, still looks a little long on the TV. On the TV. There we go. So I'm going to bring it up with open wraps, <clears throat> keeping the material on top of the hook shank to roughly here and I'm going to bring my thread back because sometimes I've been known to cut my thread and break my thread prematurely. So this will allow me to get in there and because I went ahead and do a couple wraps with my thread back, don't want to worry about cutting that. <clears throat> so you can see we've got a nice, we're working on a nice transition right here where my thread is from it being thin to a little bit thicker. And I want to put my tippet in. The tippet doesn't matter. I would say on this one, on the size 12, on the jig hook, I could probably get by with um, 4X or even 5X tippet. Um, the recipe calls for 3X tippet. And this is, this is going to be pretty darn small compared to what a lot of, the, a lot of you guys are going to fish, and that's fine. What I don't want to do is tie a size six when I'm going to go home and tie it or go when I'm going to sit here and tie size 12s and 14s and fish them. I'm going to tie the ones that I fish. So we're going to take our, our tippet, hold it up like this, honey, not like so, but like this. Um, we'll, I'll do it on my side of the hook shank because that kind of, this is where it gets a little bit different. Um, a wrap, I just did one wrap. You can see it's there. I'm pulling it to length. Put a couple wraps. Make sure I've got that short enough. And keeping the th the material on uh, my side. Because when I wrap, I can either bring it down this way and counter wrap. So my first wrap is going right there. Or I can make a hard angle and bring it this way and wrap it normally. But I want to counter wrap this. So I'm going to bring it this way. I'm not going to adjust. I'm not going to mess up my tail. And then I'm going to bring it over that wing case I'm going to tie in uh, here, not right on top of my tail. I don't know if that made any sense. I hope so. Okay. Now let's flip our, uh, flip our vise over. I've actually got a piece of this material sitting right here. So... This is the tricky part without a bio tail. Very user friendly. Yes. Um, so this is this is the really the main tricky part of this pattern. And that's getting uh, the this wing case, the flash tied in, because I'm gonna tie it in the way it rides. And um, if you want to tie it in on the other side, that's gonna be easier and probably I'll make a one bit of difference as far as fish catching it. But I'm gonna tie it in right here. And getting this tied in, there's two ways to do it. You can capture it in like this, pull it to length, and then we'll wrap it. And we're going to kind of use a thread torque to bring that material centered. You can add it, see how it's centered, centered on that hook. And you just have to. Bring your thread up, avoid this point, bring it down, and kind of slide it back. See how that worked? And when we think we're far enough back, we want to pull it forward just like we do a lot of times with wing cases and make sure there's no um, <clears throat> make sure there's no thread showing right here. 
So that's that's uh, one way of doing it. And you know what? For now, I'm just going to leave that in. And the next one, I'll do it a different way. So we've got our our tippet tied in, got our wing case tied in, and now we're going to go to our um, <clears throat> to our dubbing. Um, the one thing to look at it, when you look at the what we the body we have prepared, it's a nice shape. We've got a nice taper on there. Uh, that thread is adding a lot of bulk to it. So I do not need to build much bulk or body or size or anything with this um, with this dubbing. So I'm not saying we're going to dirty it like we're just dirtying up the thread. We're putting a teeny, teeny, teeny tiny amount on. But you want a nice solid dubbing noodle, but it does not need to be big. Um, we don't need to build bulk. We don't need to build a taper in here. The taper's already there. We just need to cover up our work right now from the from the rear to the uh, to the beginning. So everyone on Instagram, if you're watching, all seven of you, there's a party going on on YouTube. We'd love to have you hop over and say hello and watch us on there. You'll be able to see better. Hopefully, you might be able to hear better, but you'll be able to communicate a little bit better with everyone. And um, we would love to see you hop on youtube so now i'm going to take i've got my pinch here of uh, the w I'll zoom in a little bit for the instagram guys just for the fun of it um so i've got my little pinch of dubbing here i just pull off a little bit in this hand and i just set it here and dub it on i'm looking for if it has to get bigger it's going to get, need to get bigger down here but uh, i'm just looking for a nice smooth dubbing noodle you don't need to overthink it, which I would never, ever overthink anything. And <clears throat> so now we're going to, um, to go and wrap this up. Now, what I want to do is take this tippet, put it under my material clip to get it out of the way. And you see I've got this bare thread right here. So I'm going to wrap it back all the way until my dubbing starts right at that tail. Okay, just like this. So I'm gonna do side by side wraps. If I notice like right there, my dubbing got a little bit thicker, I just do a little bit wider wrap. I'm not trying to build anything, any bulk. And see, I went over there, so I'm gonna kind of keep that smooth. And I've got to put a little bit more on there. Now, if I was using a thicker thread, you can kind of see why I chose to use the ADOT thread because I want, this is a small version of this pattern. This is, I mean, this is admittedly a small version of this pattern. And if I had a, a thread that was 30% thicker, I would have 30% more bulk built before I even started adding my dubbing. And as you can see, I just want to keep it, keep it nice and smooth. So we're going to go just about to here, and we're done. Now, one of the mistakes that I will that I've made, we'll take like that off a little bit. One of the mistakes that I've made, mistakes, is I don't leave enough space right here. Definitely better here. I told you, Peter, it is a lot better. Hola, Trout Addict. Hola, Buenos Dias. Um, so this little gap right here. I almost didn't leave enough here, but I'll make it work. Do not bring your dubbing all the way to the front. You can always fill this gap in with hackle and your dubbing once we're done. Um, but if you bring this too far and the, the next steps will get really difficult because you will real quickly run out of room and you'll be building your hackle and the last dubbing collar thing, and it'll start encroaching on the bead. So that might be a little small. That might not be enough, but I'll show you a trick to make it work. So we're going to take our wing case and we're going to set it right cheer, put a little wrap on it, make sure it's centered. So you can see right there, we've got it looking nice. I like to pull it back. And we've got that tied in. Cut that off. Be careful cutting that off because if you cut the whole thing, through, then you have to take everything off and start all over. No bueno. Now we're going to take our, um, <clears throat> and we'll flip this over because it makes it easier for me to, to wrap, counter wrapping. And um, 
I'm going to bring it around. It's that first wrap right there is going on that hook shank. Like we're, I'm just wrapping it around. And when I bring it over, I don't want that to hit my, my tail. And I just bring open wraps like this. I'll tell you what, in this light, mono is not the easiest thing to see. Here we go. I'm going to tie this off. Cross, front. And the way I'm tying this off is I'm doing, because this is counter wrapped. I've got my, my material. I cross it over. Do a wrap. Cross it over. Do a wrap. I did that three times, and I know I just did that four times, but it's okay. And here, cut that off. So you can see. I've got the nice shiny wing case that has the and pull down tight on it. Uh, you can see the the segmentation that it offers offers the protection of the wing case. We're good to go on that. So now we're going to take a little pinch, just a little smidge of of the of that same dubbing. We'll dub this on, and all I want to do right now is bring my thread. Off it back to here and just put a couple, maybe a little more than that. Just a wrap or two, a solid wrap or two. Probably just did four wraps. But all we're trying to do right there is just build a little bit of a little bit of a ramp here. So when we wrap our soft tackle and everything, it'll it's gonna give it some lift. So if you want to leave that stuff in there, you can, or we can pop it off. That looks fine to me. All right. <clears throat> Any questions? You guys got quiet all of a sudden. You're like, well, I learned my one tip. I'm out of here. Peace out, homie. Just kidding. So let's find a, find a feather. That one will work. Now, if you want to put these in a, in a clip, that's fine. If you want to do lots of different things, knock yourself out. It's uh, uh, I would probably I've I've done them before in clips, and that's that that works really well. But we're going to do this kind of the speedy fashion because I feel like I'm I'm in a rush. Not too bad though. All right, so I'm going to take my I'm going to take my um, CDC feather here. And all I did is I stripped off the butt end of it and I grabbed the tip and pulled it back. I'm going to look at the fibers on the tip and how far back they go. Make sure that the, I don't want to get it all the way to the tip where that, that fiber doesn't go back too far. Like I wanted to go at least to the roughly to the back of the body. So we're fine like this. close attention typing in a distraction oh yes thank you i said 16 west tonight that's okay you can just hang out with us and watch us tie a size 14 stonefly um so the way we're going to tie this in i bet i'm the only person that has ever had cdc slip out on me i mean it never happens to anyone else i've got two wraps in like this i'll, I'll put everything to see it better i'm gonna grab my fingers pull everything back and I'm going to put another two wraps in. And now you can see we've got that folded over. You want that fold in there. I'll put one more just so I've got three to lock. Now I've got this fold in here. I cut this off. Charlie says he likes to leave that and sometimes he cuts it off. Sometimes it doesn't. When I do that, 85% of the time I end up cutting it out. So I'm just going to get it cut out the first time. Um, see CDC for everyone else, it seems to be great, but for me, uh, it slips out every now and then. So that fold will help it to where it does not slip out. So now we're, we've got our, uh, CDC fe feather, take our, our fingers, stroke them back a little bit. We're going to do two wraps. One, stroke back, two. Well, that's all I get for poking my finger two or three times. 
Not sure the fun of will pull some of these hackle fibers off. This just makes tying a little touch easier. So now I'm going to take my thread and we'll catch that stem in. Pull tight even when I fold it. Yeah, sometimes when you fold it over, it slips out, but that definitely helps. So we got three. Pull back. One, two, three. Okay, so now I'm going to pull this, cut this stem out here. As you can see, I'm doing all these wraps to just lock everything in. If I did, um, if I was using a thick, once again, if I was using a thicker thread, there'd be a higher probability of just building too much bulk here. All right. Remember I said that leaving that gap right there was important. That's because I'm still going to put one more hackle on. So I'm going to pull everything back again. Just make sure it's, we are tying Charlie, Charlie's pattern here. So we'll pull out his official dubbing brush, kind of fluff out the, CDC, the dubbing tail, make sure everything is looking fine. I'm going to pull it back and we'll put a few wraps in, just a couple, just to get that nice and swooped. Now, my hackle's way too long. And this is what the one John's flies, you cast them out and just bring them back. <laughs> um, all right. So I'm going to grab, grab like this, pull up, and um, break it off of my fingers because this was a really nice CDC feather. I'm still a little bit long for my taste. So we're just going to break it off if you want. Sometimes when you get really close like this, this is a trip, trick that I learned from Jesse Huddleston. Use your CNF hackle pliers. Watch this. You can get in here like this, grab it, and then break off like butter. This is when you're like really trying to fine tune and make something way too complicated. But I really like that trick. So now we've got the hackle. I like the CDC to go between the body and the tips of the tail. That's just me. And let's see if how Charlie's thing does. Roughly, roughly, that's how he likes his hackle here. Roughly. His might be a touch shorter, but I don't want my CDC. There we go. I don't want the CDC to go past the tail. Um, so there's that. So now we're going to do our golden straw hackle. Now I'm going to just grab one that I think is going to work. This one looks fine. I'm going to kind of measure it. Now on the one that we tied or we posted earlier today, I think that hackle was a little bit long. Kind of me telling on myself, I think it was too long. So um, I want to make sure, and that's because the hackle sizes on this saddle, everyone knows saddles got bigger feathers than, than where you've got smaller options on capes and do saddles, two different breeds of birds, but <clears throat> these are just bigger feathers. So if I was going to use this again, I'd probably put it in a loop, but with the Brahma hen, you can, uh, you don't have to put it in a loop at all. So I like for this to be shorter than the CDC. And this might be, call that perfect. All right, so I've got my, my feather here. And I'm going to cut it off at the base. So we're going to go like this, cut it off. And we're going to cut here. If you want to strip, that's fine. Just strip them off, pull them and strip them. Pull them and strip them, honey. Nothing on that one. Okay, so we'll, we've got that, see how I've got the, the butt in like this, so I'm not tying this in by the tip. You can tie it in by the tip, but I'm not. Um, hold it right like that. Put one, two, three, all the way up, and that should be enough to hold it in. I'm gonna put two wraps in, and remember we've already got two wraps of CDC. I'm going to pull these hackle fibers back. Now, this is a trick that I like to show people because everyone knows to pull the hackle fibers like that. But if you will pull the feather through your fingers like this, and you can pull it back as well, but pull the feather through your fingers. See how I'm moving the feather? There'll be less likelihood. For some reason, that doesn't pull out as much doing it like that as pulling hard with just my, 
just my fingers like that. So I'm going to do one, see how that looks. And then we'll do two. Okay. Misha is having a ball back here. I wish you guys could see her. She's going nuts. So I got her three wraps in. Pull everything back. Get all that, those fibers out of the way. Okay. So I could pull a Davy McPhail and just pull it off. Now what the heck? I'll try. One, two, three, pop. Great. So now we've got the, this, this part done. So we're almost done with our fly. You can see it's looking nice. The, the hackle's going back just the way we want it. Um, <clears throat> looking good. Now all we need to do is just put a little pinch, like maybe two thin turns of dubbing right here. One, two, and slide this up. So we got one turn, two turns, and then we'll put one right there. So now we've got that, got that all, all done, all taken care of. Now I, that CDC for me looks a little bit manicured where I broke it off. It's kind of so I might go in there later with the pair of scissors and and just on the CDC kind of rough that up a little bit. But I think that looks okay for now. Now we'll do a quick whip finish and pull this one thing out because there's one fiber that is aggravating me here. And Gary's like, just the one fiber? There's about 20 of them that aggravated me. Okay. I'm going to put some Sally Hansen's on here. And this is just the way I like to uh, secure my whip finishes. Put it right in between the bead and the um, that dubbing and bring it down. We got it nice, nice and secured, pull tight. It kind of slides down, and now we're good. So we got this really nice, you can see that, that flash right there. So it's going to ride like this. The flash is going up right now. And um, we've got it got it ready to go. See how that tail is short. Remember, this is a stone, this is supposed to be a stone fly. That was a good throw, honey. All the way up top and it bounced back at you. <laughs> Katie. My arm's getting tired. I've been throwing. <laughs> um it is uh it is heavily hackled because it has two and remember that is just two wraps that is just two wraps of uh, cdc and two wraps of in this case a brahma hen and that's it so don't overdress this that i mean you can see a lot of it because of the, it has a ton of light on it but i do not need any more uh dubbing on there there is all that lead underneath plus a tungsten bead so this one's going to sink very nicely um and um so short tail Make sure the hackle's not too long. Make sure it's not too full. Keep it thin. Keep it heavy. And that's the that's kind of the trick of it. So let's do a uh, move this around so you can see a little better. Um, thank you, TDO Junior. You guys on YouTube or Instagram, come over and check us out on YouTube. You'll see better. There's a couple people who said they can see a lot better, and it's um, it's more fun because I'm actually watching the comments there. So here is our um, our doodad here. So. Let's, I think so is going to be my next thing that Katie's going to tell me to quit doing. This one actually looks better, believe it or not. This one looks better than the one we posted today. So with any luck, we'll talk Katie into taking a picture of this one. And are we going to get crazy and tie one more? Because that is just one fly. Um, if we never just tie one fly, I think I can do this next one quicker. You guys ask questions. CJ, you keep everyone in line and, um, We'll, uh, we'll, we will do this darn thing. And I had everything laid out for this other one. Okay. So we're going to use 3.5 millimeter tungsten and bead on the same size. Well, have you ever tried putting strip CDC and hackle in the split thread all in one shot? Don, I have thought about it. That's one of the things that when I can't go to sleep at night, I think about. I'm like, I wonder how I could get that all to fit in there without making a mess, without 
So I have definitely thought about it for like, I don't know, three or four years. The problem is I have never tried it. So no, I think it sounds like an awesome idea. I'm going to have to buy another Brahma hen. CJ, don't, don't do it. Look at what you've got. It doesn't have to be a Brahma hen. I, this next one, I love Brahma hens. I think they're great. You can also use, um, you can find the color you want, the four beads. They're really good. And, and uh, Timothy, thank you so much. That, that made my knife. Um, you're just being nice. This right here is probably my, my favorite one, the freshwater streamer. If you can find this one, and I'll show you why once McKay comes back and changes the camera, I'll show you. Um, <clears throat> but the, the, the freshwater streamer hen cape is, is pretty darn cool. And Steve's right. Hen hackle relatively is inexpensive. Uh, so let's get our, our wire on here, our lead. So we go one, two, three, four. Remember backwards, five, six, seven. Helicopter, slide up. Make sure that bead's set right. Helicopter, and then I got to put some other thread on. We're really making this complicated here. So we'll pull this off. Did anyone see the new bobbins that TMCO came out with today? Anyone, anyone. Now I'm going to switch over to, you guessed it, purple 12 watt classic wax thread. And I didn't have the same type of dubbing in purple. I, I, I was going to do ice dub. I was going to use uh, an ice dub type material, but instead I found a different one. This is what, this is the material I tied them on uh, a while back when I was also doing yellow. Uh, anyway, I got ahead of myself. So we'll start the thread behind here. Bring it up. Pop it off. Start working on our ramp. Don says, cool. I've tried it. It's not real clean, but it seems fast. Oh, yes. I was thinking of needing a bobbin or two. I, I've, I've only, I've, like I said earlier, it's been crazy. I haven't spent a lot of time looking at them, but good grief. That's the dog. That's not Katie throwing anything at me. Um. I'm sure I'll, I'll end up buying one eventually. I just haven't looked too much to see what the difference is. It looks a lot like the double arm bobbin, but it's a single arm bobbin, but they've already got a single arm bobbin out. So I don't really understand what it is. We'll see. $45. I'm cheap. Oh gosh. I, I, 45 bucks is a bunch for a, for a bobbin. Nice. While you are. Yeah. Well, like I said, I, I saw just like everyone else did when they when they came out. Okay, so I'm looking at this, and, and I haven't tied this one yet, but I'm looking at my my roost my uh, pheasant tail, and there's a ton of broken fibers here on the tips, on those tips anyway. I just need the tips, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the bottom off here, and I'm gonna pull off roughly the same amount. And this is more like a I don't know what color you'd have to call this. It's not purple. But this is the closest thing. It was either this or me use black or a melanistic, melanistic, uh, different color. But this is one I just went with. Oh, that did not turn out too good. All right. So we've got our, our um, tips lined up. We're going to do the exact same thing. We do a little pinch wrap. Wrap up, down, make sure it's all the way back. Look at the length and look at that. That looks fine to me. Oh, shoot. Right on top. Hey, and can I show another trick? Is that okay? Grab this. This is Lance Egan. Pop it off. Hey, you don't have to get our thing. Is it hard to find these days? I remember when I got those, we bought like, I don't know, half a dozen or so of them, maybe a few more. Because they were they were all over the place, um, so at the time they were all over the place. And okay, get the same. We get our same uh, tippet. Lock it in. Pull it to length. Make sure we get it all the way back. So remember, it's on my side, but on the bottom. You see, you can see it right there, right under that tail. Because when I start wrapping, I don't want to pull the tail around. 
And I told you I was going to do the um, the wing case a little different. So that piece is a little short. So let's let's be wasteful and cut off a new piece. Split thread dub one leg of loop and use only three quarter inch of CVC and hackle stacked on top of each other. The period put in loop at the bottom of diving spinner wrap. It is pre clean. Just do it sparsely. Mm -hmm. Gary, you sound what you're doing. I think that sounds absolutely brilliant. Brilliant, I tell you. Hey, Phil, bra inventories are low. This is, but freshwater is substantial. Okay, so guys on YouTube, Phil, I wish you were on Instagram or on YouTube. Mister, the the man who would know on YouTube on Instagram here just said that the Brahma in, inventories are low, but the freshwater streamers are good to go. So, Phil, if you're still on there, let me know. But um. Freshwater streamers, they might be low in your shop. If they are, ask. But we can get the freshwater, or they can get the freshwater streamer line. Um, I hope that helps. And I'll, I'm, I need to look down at Instagram more often because that is the man who grades your hackle at whiting when you see a silver, bronze, gold, whatever, pro grade. He's the one that actually goes through just – him and Jake go through every single bird that they, they sell. So that's pretty cool that, that, uh, that Mr. Tram got on here. All right. So I said, I was going to go over a different technique. The first one we tied in the, um, let me get my pointer so you can see here. We flip back over to the vice, please, ma'am. So the first one we tied in the flash here and then we wrap back. So this time we're going to tie it in right here. So I'm going to kind of cord up my thread a little bit. So I don't want it to be too wide. So I'm just working my thread back until I get it right there, right where I want it. I'm going to take my flash here and kind of set it right on my thread. So I'm bringing my, the flash down to where it touches the thread. Let's see. So Phil said I was correct. I went on YouTube that the freshwater streamer. And now Phil is at hens as well as roosters. Um, Cause we're, but um, yes. So freshwater streamer inventories at Whiting Farms is fine. So order them up. Okay, so you see how I just did that? I took my flash, set it on the thread, and I'm taking it, my thread, bringing it over and rolling it over. It's now about, because I rolled it over, you see how this tag is going up and it's kind of in the center? It's because it is in the center. And now I'm going to pull up what length it's okay if it does that. Well, shoot, it's not okay if it does that, Phil or uh, Gary. All right, we'll try this again. So we've got the tinsel on touching the thread. Use the thread to wrap it around, and we're right right where we want it to be, right there. Hold it up, and I want that to come down a little bit. As you can tell, this way is a little bit more tricky than the first time. The key is not this tag end so much as where is this piece. And you can see this piece right here is going, if I could hold it up right and hold it around to you, that's right up the back of it or the front of it. That's right, centered right there. That's what we want. All right, Phil said hen capes and rooster capes, saddles and both. Hen capes and rooster capes. Saddles and both are currently depleted. So with the freshwater streamer, hen capes and rooster capes, we've got plenty. Saddles on both are both hen and rooster are depleted. So if you want one of these, which is what I'm using, uh, this freshwater streamer hen cape, they've got plenty. Thanks, Phil. That's awesome. Super cool. Okay, so now we're, we're doing purple. And if I can find my purple version of this, this is what I get for trying to be halfway organized. There we go. So I'm going to use this uh, the nat Fine Natural Dubbing Rainbow Blend Purple Rainbow. This is a real neat mottled purple color. Um, and it, it is a fine natural dubbing. What I was looking for, and we flip over the side view here. There we go. 
So you see that modeling in there? I was looking for that within a, in a coarser dubbing and I couldn't find that. Um, the closest thing was going to be ice dub and I uh, just couldn't bring myself to use an ice dub. So we just, I like using stuff a little bit different. Um, okay, so I've got my little piece here um, that is pulled out of the, the corner. I'm gonna grab this and these are long fibers. So that's all I need for the, this is all I need for the whole fly. Um, <clears throat> let's pull this, get that out of the way. And I'm just going to break off little pieces. The same as before. If we zoom into the, the hook itself, you see we've got the tapers already built. We don't need to, to build any taper. We just need to cover everything up with dubbing. So just pull this off. We want the dubbing to wrap around the thread and make a nice thin dubbing noodle that we can wrap up. And there's a little bit of flash in this as well. But like I said, don't get, don't get too caught up in having one specific type of dubbing. And if, if you like, if you wonder if this will work, shoot us an email or shoot our email, shoot us a message on Instagram. Um, if it doesn't work, we'll let you, we'll, I'd be shocked if I say no, but if you don't believe us, then ask Mr. Craven himself. All right. So same as before, bare thread, work my thread back until it starts right there. Let's make sure that my dubbing is going to start right on top, right by that. There we go. This is like one of those you got to stick your tongue out while you're wrapping it to make sure it's make sure you're wrapping good. There we go. So remember, that's about how much space we need. Maybe a touch more, we're pushing it, and that's it. So we'll strip this off. We don't need to build a ta any more taper. Remember, we're going to, after we wrap the tinsel and the mono and everything, we're going to, um, uh, we're going to add in a little dubbing ball there. So pull this forward. Let me get my thread here. Pull this forward before I pull down tight. Just pull up on tinsel, make sure it's centered. See, see how that, that looks good. Put a couple wraps, pull it back, bring a couple wraps there. Okay, I'll make it three a lot. And now, because it's easier for me to wrap, I'm going to flip it this way. That first wrap goes around the hook shank and then over it's in the dubbing now. Pull tight, pull tight, pull tight. I'm saying pull tight when right now my my the the rib is kind of loose, kind of loose. Pull tight now. So I'm not pulling really tight as I hit that um as I hit the tinsel because I don't want to push it over to the side. Cross, wrap, cross, wrap, cross, wrap. <clears throat> you still over there, Gary, or Ed? All right, now. Throw a pinch of dubbing on. Because remember, all we're trying to do here is tie <clears throat> just a little bit of a bump behind this bead. Okay. I think that, oh, good. It was getting quiet over there. I was, I was getting worried about you. Now let's switch dubbings. Let's go to, I'm thinking more of a white, so a contrast ribbon. Like I said, I was so prepared for tonight. Right, Katie? Yeah. Super prepared. All right. Here's a light done. So this is the Orvis brand. Guys, when you're out in the field and you stop in a fly shop, you got to look and be like, huh, I don't think I've got that. That's on sale. May as well. So here is a, well, this is pretty darn nice. I 
I figured Mark with purple rain dubbing. This is purple rainbow dubbing, Jim. This is a, a newer dubbing that Nature Spirit came out with. All right. So same thing. I've got my tip here. I'm going to capture it with a couple wraps. Pull two. Pull back. And then we'll do three. One, two, three. Got this little tip here. When you do that, don't cut out your don't cut out your feather. Pull this off, pull this off because I forgot to do that earlier. And I'm just talking about the trick again. Pull the feather through your finger, not so much your finger through the feather. Now we're going to two wraps. Wrap number one, pull back. Wrap number two. Now, I don't know, guys, what should this be called? Um, looks like cotton candy. Well, you can call it cotton candy. We call it the cotton candy golden, or the CDC cotton candy stone. Pull this back. I don't want to get too much. They're falling. This wraps are falling down, which is fine. There we go. Get rid of that stem. And we've got our it's just hard to believe that's only two wraps of uh <clears throat> of CDC. Now it does look quite a bit thinner. IRL. And I miss what color of um yeah, it was purple rainbow. Um, nature spirit, uh, fine natural dubbing. It's not super fine. It's more, but it, it, it will dub nice. And as you can see on this one, they dub, dub nice and smooth. So I'm just being too particular with that. All right. So now let's wrap the hackle. And like I said, this is the Whiting Farms freshwater streamer hen cape. Phil Tram was on here a minute ago on Instagram, and uh, these are readily available. The hen saddles and the rooster saddles in the American line are not, but the hen capes are. Uh, that's what I'm using, and this is a badger dyed purple. So let's do the same thing we did on that uh, golden straw one. Let's find a color that we want, or find a size, sorry, find a size we want that looks maybe a touch small but we'll call it good just for time all right i'm gonna take my my um let's yeah i'm gonna take the feather cut it off i'm gonna go up cut the cut the stem so we just have just a little bit of that butt in that's trimmed out now you can strip the strip them down but the point is on the, this type of feather, what I want to do, I don't want to tie in by the tip. And here's why I don't want to tie this in by the tip. Because I don't want to feather the, the feather. Huh, funny word. So the fibers here are shorter than back here. For this particular fly, I want to use the section of feather that's in between my fingers right now. This, sorry, this section here. I don't want to use this section here because I don't want the first few wraps to be shorter or the first wrap to be one length and second wrap to be another length. So I want to use this. Now, does that mean if I tied in my tip, it'd be, it wouldn't work? Nope. Tied in my tip. That's what you want to do. This is not one of those. Um, it's just me explaining my kind of weird train of thought of why I'm tying something in a certain way. And another thing that helps is this is the way Charlie Craven told, told us to do it. So, Figured if he's doing it that way, may as well figure out if it works. And it does. So we'll grab our hackle fiber, sit it right there. There we go. Three of them actually going to have to put four in. So we've got our fiber tied in. And I don't think I've seen anyone tie a purple CDC Golden Stone. This is a whip finish Wednesday. It's just how we roll around here. Kind of crazy. So pull it back. It's one wrap. 
Two wraps. Oh. Just the tip. So one wrap. Two wraps. Okay. Now we'll put a couple wraps in here. Take this off. Make sure I'm holding my bobbin tight. Pull everything back. I'm trying to make sure that's all captured nicely and leave a little bit of space there for the dubbing. I'll we'll pull the tip, hold my thread tight, pop that off, and we're looking good. Everyone on YouTube or Instagram, if you're watching, we'd love for you to come over and join us on the old YouTube. You've got better quality. You can see better. We're watching the comments better. As CJ Vapnik said, what Tiger King, I don't think that I'm going to financially recover from this. I think the, the streamer, they're like 20 bucks. So they're not, they're not too bad, but every single week of trying to financially, it, yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you 100%. All right. So let's throw a little more dubbing on here. If I can find my piece, here it is. Just a little bit because I just want a couple turns of dubbing that's thin. All this is doing is just covering some thread wraps and uh, helping my hackle lay back if it needs help. We're gonna encourage it, Katie. That's right. One, two, ooh, I might get two and a half. So now we've got that, <clears throat> that done. So uh, uh, my CDC is a little long. I'll trim that probably later so you don't sit and watch me trim CDC. Everyone says don't use scissors are absolutely correct. Unless you trim them one fiber at a time, then you can knock yourself out. But for the most part, just grab, pinch, pull them off. Try to do it before you tie in your other hackle like I am not doing. So we got that done. I'm going to put a little, little Sally Hansen's on here. I tell you what, if I get Sally Hansen's in my bobbin, doesn't matter how expensive it is, it will not be fun. Gary said, "Way to bang it out." Oh man, we we banging tonight for sure. <laughs> if you guys knew exactly what was going on before we went live, you'd be shocked right now. You'd be like, "Holy, that was pretty pretty good." Yeah, basically, John was like, yeah, I got something to do. Go home and set everything up and have it ready for me to just walk in and sit down. Mm -hmm. And she did. And I was like, okay. She absolutely did. So thank you, Jeff. Love the colors. Uh, thank you, Nan. I, I think it's pretty pretty good. Uh, I, I don't. We'll see how this purple works. I have no idea. I don't um, either, but I really like the way it looks. It looks super cool. Yeah, I wish I could have bought stock and white. Yeah. Um, yeah, it looks super cool. I don't know if it'll work or not, but I know for a fact this version here, this um the 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 actual OG version works phenomenally well. This Brahma hen cape or the freshwater streamer with the, the badger coloring works phenomenally well. Um I'm probably going to tie some more and I'm going to use this again, but I am going to put this in a dubbing loop. And uh, Gary was talking about, um, and I forget who asked me, it was Don, um, asked about putting them in, putting both this and the CDC in one loop. I'll probably, probably play around with that. Um, so that purple is going to be fly. So, you know, the, one of the reasons I did the purple is, this original one, that's the OG pattern, right? That's Charlie Craven's. That, that's 100% him. It's a phenomenal pattern. It works good. But we did the purple one because I want to show that, do like if you want to get creative, get creative. If you don't have all the right materials, don't uh, don't be hesitant. Like use what you've got. If um if all you've got is a winger cape or if all you got is a grizzly cape, do it up and you use the grizzly <laughs> cape. It's totally <laughs> totally fine. The goal, yeah. bless Excuse you. Me. Your CDC uh, feathers are in my nose. Uh, bless you, honey. You're so sweet. Um, <clears throat> so, guys, we really appreciate y'all hopping on. This has been a fun evening. Um, we had had a 
had a lot of fun, all things considered. Tied up two heavy hitters. Um, like I said, this um, <laughs> Dirty Rig Flyco on, that's Shane, on uh, Instagram. Well, you need to hop over on YouTube, Shane. But he uh, he said, bless you. He heard you all the way in Washington, I think. <laughs> um, it was that loud. It looks like a red. It was, oh, um, it's that white and purple. So it's just white CDC and a purple freshwater streamer haggle. So um, everyone on YouTube, thank you so much. Uh, we, we had a blast. Comment on this video. We'll do two drawings next week for two boxes, one for this past group and um, and one for the, the upcoming one. So it'll be a big one. We'll, we'll throw throw some stuff together and then not this coming weekend, but next weekend, Katie and I will be in Edison, New Jersey at the fly fishing show. Uh, so if y'all are around, we'd love to see you hopping on. And um, what else, Katie? Yep. Yep. All right. Well, I'll turn it over to Katie. Let her um, take us out. See you guys. Have a wonderful week. Thank you very much. Bye, everybody. Have a great week. Ties and flies. See you later. Bye. See you guys. Bye. Everyone on Instagram, take it easy.